uh, I should be live now, I hope. And I hope uh, a lot of you will be watching this after live. My beard doesn't look its best, does it? Uh, and so welcome to later if you're not watching live. And if you're watching live, I'm glad you're here. Um, let's, I always never am sure until, until I've actually got some comments coming through. Hopefully someone's out there. Okay, I think I just came on. There's always a slight delay, so I'm never 100% sure. Hi, everyone. We're live. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm living my life exactly the way I'm living it today. I wouldn't change anything about my life. If I found out uh, I was going to die in a year, what would I change? Nothing. This is the life I want to live in exactly the way I want to live it. So I'm one of the very fortunate few, and of course, you can be one of the fortunate few as well. My goal is to share with you how you can be one of the fortunate few who would not change your life even if you could, even if you had to. So let's see, who's on? I should spend some time. Uh, Vagabond Rob, clarification on my photo, okay. Uh, hi, uh, Alberta, I just really can't see I'm looking into the sun. Hello, Bob from Ocala, Florida. I know Ocala, Florida well. My mom used to live just south of there in Lady Lake. It's a nice town. I'm pretty familiar with Ocala National Forest. I like, I like it a lot. Uh, it's a little hard to camp there, but it's a nice place. Really, really nice place. Uh, okay, and so I guess I should keep, say hi. Hi from Ohio. Hello, Bob. Hello from PA. Greetings from Gulf. Huh? Good picture? Good. We, um, <clears throat> my friend Cliff turned me on to a, a different kind of a, uh, a hotspot. And we have just found it to be a blazingly fast. So we're using it now always. And hopefully we will be getting better and better pictures uh, because of it. Uh, we, we had pretty good internet here. And uh, hopefully uh, you won't have a lot of problems with me dropping out. Sometimes it drops out and I don't know why. There's just no understanding why. Um, let me go down to the lake and see if I can keep from falling over. That would not be fun. Um, and show you the lake. We're still at my lake. This is one of my very favorite all-time camp so scamp spites. Let's see, how do I turn this thing around? I turn it around, so I'm going to get my finger in front of the camera. Uh, camping in Lancaster, PA. Hi from Reno. Hello from Vegas. Uh, Doug Fisher, I think. Cheers all. It's hard for me to read this. Same lake? Yeah. Yeah, same exact lake as we were on before. I'd reversed it, so there's Casey's van. She's here. She's the brains of the outfit. This is the lake. Some of you were thinking this looks like a swamp. And I guess I can see that. Um, the truth is, it's a, uh, it's a beautiful, clear, little lake. Uh, and what you see on the surface of the lake is um, pollen. In the spring here in uh, Oregon, I'm in Oregon still. In the spring, you get all this pollen. In the, uh, I mean, the sol my solar panels turned into a solid green. I mean, just literally solid green with pollen. And so the whole lake was literally green from pollen, and it's all kind of bunched up. But I don't know if you can see this, uh, but it's crystal clear. You can see right to the bottom of this lake. It is absolutely crystal clear. And you just have some of this fallen logs and, and, uh, and some of this pollen, and then there's grass. This is one of the prettiest lakes I've ever seen. In fact, there are fish in it. We know there's a great big turtle we've seen, uh, a great big turtle in the lake. It's probably a foot across. And um, we know there's fish. We've actually had ospreys fly over and pull fish right out of the lake. Let's see, I'm on the, uh, maybe you could see it better. It's just crystal clear. I can see right to the bottom everywhere. This is not a swamp. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous lake. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that in to the bottom or not. I doubt it. Really pretty. Okay, we'll go on. Okay, so we have a topic for today. Today's topic is um, today. And see, there's my van. So there's my van. There's the lake. I mean, you can't park closer to a lake than that, or I don't know how you can. I could be in it, uh, but I really, really am impressed 
with this. Great camping area. All right, yep. So I got to distracted there. Oh, let me show you something else. Some wonderful person, and I, we're not giving out names. Uh, we will, if you'd like us to, let us know. Bought us this uh, Energizer 2000. I'll do a, uh, I've been doing reviews on one. A guy gave us one uh, from Energizer. And we've been doing it. And we want to go up. There we go. I've been doing an interview on, on the Energizer. We need an Energizer for the RTR, and so we put it on our wish list on Amazon, and some nice person sent it to us. Okay, let me turn you back around. Okay, here I am. All right, so let's get started. Today's topic is um, uh, which RV to buy, oh, RV versus van, if you're going to buy a van, which van? If you're going to buy an RV, which RV? Just we're going to take your questions. That's the way we always do this. If I don't get any questions, then I'll I'll give you start giving you some answers. I always have answers. And of course, we'll do announcements. Um, first, there was uh, friends of ours uh, who they've been members of the car, uh, caravan. I think I did a video with them, and their RV burned down. That might factor into your decision: RV or van? RVs seem to burn down at an alarming rate. That would really concern me if I owned an RV. Um, I don't own an RV, but I know an awful lot about them because I know a lot of people that do own them. Um, and so that would concern me. But at any rate, Brett and Kim, their, their RV burned down. They were driving along. They had a, a trailer and a, um, a, a travel trailer pulling with their truck. They pulled over to have lunch and um, trailer caught fire and they were able to get disconnect the truck but they lost the um, they lost the uh, the trailer and everything they owned they, they all they managed to do was save themselves the cat and uh, disconnect the truck so they didn't lose the truck as well that's all they have left in the world and so they need help and I have a GoFundMe and it's it's complicated to give the GoFundMe. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a live link to their GoFundMe for Brett and Kim, whose van caught fire, down in the um, in the description. And moderators, if you would be uh, so kind as to give out, put out the live link in the chat. They can drop in, a, I believe they can drop in a live link. I don't know why they couldn't. So that you will have a live link in the chat as you go along. Also, they have a PayPal and you can PayPal them money directly. Uh, and they will put the drop, the, they will put the uh, Gmail address. They have, you just, for PayPal, you just use a, uh, the Gmail address. I'll give you that. It's K-B-I-L-L. -L. So it's K-Bill, I-E-U. K, so I'm going to say it again, K-B-I-L-L-I-E-U 2016 at gmail.com. So if you, you can PayPal them that money, uh, and I've already given a donation, and I really heartily recommend that we support each other in this way. One day it can be you. That's what we all have to bear in mind. You could be driving down the road, someone could steal your van, you could lose your van. It's all kinds of ways that disaster can strike. None of us are immune from disaster. So the more we take care of each other, the better off we are. Okay, uh, I'm nearing 300,000 uh, subscribers. I'd hoped I'd hit 300,000 today. I bought balloons, I bought the party hats. We'll do a, a, a subscriber, 300,000 subscriber party. But I'd hope to do it today live. That would've been great. I've got the balloons in the van. I hope they stay up, they're helium. Uh, and so we'll be doing that soon. Thank you all, all you subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please do. That it's That's the number one thing you can do to support my channel or any other YouTube channel is just to uh, subscribe. That's really a good thing. Uh, we had talked about, I've been mentioning doing another van build in August. We've postponed it. Uh, there's just too much going on. Uh, we have a lot going on at Homes on Wheels Alliance. Uh, dot, uh, Homes on Wheels Alliance, the 501c3 that my friend Sue Ann and I have founded. So much going on. We've put off the, uh, the next uh, minivan build until probably October. We'll do a minivan build in October in Pahrump, Nevada. That's our home base. I'm actually a Pahrump, Nevada resident. Uh, and so we'll do a, a minivan build there, weather permitting. It can still be really, really hot in, in 
in in in uh, October in Pahrump. I've got it. Uh, so weather permitting, I mean, if it's 110, I'm not going to go there and build a minivan. And I wouldn't expect you to either. We'll just wait and see. We'll have to play it by ear. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, and so in, in getting prepared for the minivan, next minivan build, we have a donor who is offering to match dollar for dollar every dollar that's raised for the next minivan build. So up to $5,000. So if you will go to homesonwheelsalliance.org and make a donation between now and October for the minivan build, we have a donor that will match your dollar up to $5,000. If we bring in $10,000 uh, with this matching donor, then uh, we can build two, possibly three minivans. We're just about ready. We've got we're, we did a manual, we've created a manual on how to, we did the minivan build. It will be a PDF on the website, which you, anyone can download, there's no charge. Uh, so you can see the exact plans. We'll do, um, we'll do a video on the final video on the build and everything, how we did it. Uh, and so it's a great build. It's kind of a U-shaped in the minivan. We did it with the idea of absolute minimum skills. You know, you gotta be able to, to handle a jigsaw, uh, jigsaw Actually, I don't think we used a jigsaw. Maybe we did. Uh, a skill saw or a jigsaw. You could use a jigsaw instead if that's what you have. And uh, a drill. If you can handle those two things, you can do this minivan build. It wasn't that hard. Okay, so uh, that's homesonwheelsalliance.org. Just go there and uh, you can uh, donate towards the minivan build. And we have a donor that will match it dollar for dollar. Let me go back over by the lake. I like you seeing the lake. Okay, uh, we had a contest. We've been having a photo contest for the uh, website, the Homes on, Homes on Wheels Alliance .org website. And so we've picked the winners. And these are the big winners. Uh, drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. Great drum roll, huh? And the winners are number one, uh, and in, in, number one, Annie Calvallo, uh, High Jolly in Quartzite. Uh, that's the photo name. So, Annie, uh, each of you will be receiving an email because you had to send in an email address. And we're giving each of you a T-shirt, a Homes on Wheels Alliance T-shirt. We'll send one of those out. We'll call, we'll email and make arrangements how to get that T-shirt. Uh, the second one is Lacey Gibson, a man and his dog. That was the name of the photo. Number three is Vagabond Rob, Moonrise over the LaSalle Mountains, Utah. Uh, Randy Heaton. Moon over the RTR, and number five, and I'm not exactly sure how to say it, it's K-M-M-E-C-H at Ehrenberg, Arizona. So those are the five winners. Each will get a t-shirt. Annie Calvallo, uh, Lacey Gibson, Vagabond Rob, Randy Heaton, and Kamich, <laughs> I hope. Uh, you'll be receiving an email with instructions how you can get your t-shirt. Uh, at homesonwheelsalliance.org. And you can go there and see all the winning um, photos. Really great photos. Really, really, really good photos. Okay, and one of the things I'm going to start doing is reading some of my email to you. These are absolutely real, and I know I could just be making them up, and I can't prove it to you that I'm not. You, you know, you either trust me. At this point, you have been around long enough. You either think I'm a a lying scumbag or I'm not. And so hopefully you've concluded I am not a lying scumbag. And if you've concluded that, this is an email that I get. It's really typical of the emails I get. Uh, and I will edit it out for uh, anything that might uh, identify this person as I go along. <clears throat> okay. I'm a 66-year-old person. I'll try not even to give you the sex, so you can't even make a guess. There are a lot of 66-year-old people. Six years ago, I got very sick. I was in a lot of pain and still suffer from chronic pain. I need to use a walker to get around outside. I used to live in this large metropolitan city for seven years, but my spouse uh, met my spouse in another state. The weather here is hard on me both physically and mentally. Um, I became severely depressed 
and looked at death as my only way out. I'm going to be doing a video on depression coming up, I hope real soon. Depression is such a serious issue for a lot of us. Uh, I have suffered with depression for, uh, chronic depression for quite some time now. And so I, I think I have uh, some room to speak. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video on depression. And looked at death as my only way out. I looked at death as my only way out. Suicide has been a viable option to me for several years. Oddly enough, right now, I is the first time uh, in a very long time when it's not an option. Um, and I can't even tell you exactly how that happened, but it did. Uh, I became severely depressed and looked at death as my only way out. I felt both hopeless and helpless. I've been there and done that. Then I found you on YouTube. That, that's a sentence I love to read. I felt both hopeless and helpless. Then I found you on YouTube. That makes everything I'm doing more than worth the effort. Uh, my world has opened up and now I am full of hope. I think of myself in the hope providing business. My world has opened up and now I'm full of hope and I don't feel helpless anymore. I can live. One of your videos showed a man in a wheelchair and he was making it work and happy. He honestly was. He was happy. Tears of joy, Bob, for what you have done and continue to do for me and others like me. Thank you. And I tell you, uh, so I get letters from folks and they say, Bob, take care of yourself. You're going to burn out. You're going to quit. When I get a letter like this, I can go a long, long ways. I just will tell you that. When I get a letter like this, I can go a long, long ways. I'm going to do a little business. I think I'm all done with those. Double check for me. Okay. And we'll start on, on the questions. That's the first question. First question. And then... Uh, oh, good. That just fits right in perfectly with the topic. Okay. Okay. All right. So, the first one is from Amy Jo. What RV is best for someone in a power wheelchair? Well, Amy, I'm so glad you asked. We just talked about... Uh, we just talked about someone, this video I have of a friend, and I'm sorry, I don't remember names. I am so terrible with names. I apologize to all of you. I'll meet people and I just have met them and I've forgotten your name and I feel so terrible, but it's not going to get any better. I'm afraid it's a form of dementia. It, it actually concerns me a bit. Um, I work, I live my life and all my work around the idea of, I don't know how much longer my brain's going to be functioning, so I better get everything I've done today I can. Uh, but that's okay. I've been living my life that way for a while. Death has become my best friend and ally in life. Uh, and I would recommend it as a best friend. So, um, and now perhaps dementia will be my next, 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 my next best friend. So, um, I have a video uh, about this guy whose name I can't remember. And he, he uh, is in a power wheelchair. He lost a leg. He can get around with just one leg, but it's not easy. And he doesn't use a, uh, um, a prosthetic, and I don't know why. Bob? Yeah. His name is Bob. Oh, oh, that's right. How could I forget? Bob. His name is Bob. Now I remember instantly. Uh, and so he's in a tra uh, cargo trailer. And that's what I recommend for anybody in a wheelchair, uh, is you get a cargo with a drop-down back door, uh, and then you get a blank slate inside, get it as big as enough as you need. I would recommend 7 by 12 is kind of a minimum, as really a good size. Build the... the uh, get a friend. I've Several of these people I've known have built the interiors themselves. You can do it. Uh, man, once you've made the decision, I'm going to live and this is how I'm going to live, you can do an amazing amount of stuff. And so you get a friend or hire on someone and build the interior, go in with your wheelchair and find all the turning, find where you have to get a grab bar to get into the bed and out of the bed and where's what's the height you have to have for the kitchen and and the toilet and all that stuff. You just build the van around you and your wheelchair. And with a blank space of a cargo trailer, it's easy to do. And almost anything with a big enough engine, you know, you're not going to do it with a smart car. With a smart car, you're not going to, or a Prius, you're not going to pull a 7x12 cargo trailer with those. But almost any SUV with a bigger V6 or pickup, uh, actually a good choice might be a v, uh, one of the small pickups, a Tacoma or a Ranger, a uh, Nissan Frontier. Uh, with a um, with a sh with a shell on it might be a really good choice. Lots of cargo room. It would tow a, a cargo trailer real easily, and then that's that's the cheapest way. I mean, you can get a good seven by twelve trailer probably for four grand. I'm just I'm guessing. I haven't done any research in a while. I would guess four grand for a new one, and it will r last forever and not fail you. 
and uh, and that's one of the reasons I have a video on 10 reasons you should be in a cargo trailer and not in an RV and that's right at the top the roof on that trailer is never going to leak it'll just never leak there's no reason it should uh, whereas the roof on any RV is going to leak and then how are you going to get a rebuild the interior of an RV and for a wheelchair you'd have to tear everything out then rebuild everything new just buy a cargo trailer put the plenty of room for solar on the roof get everything you need keep your battery charged uh, on your wheelchair I just really I think a wheel a, a cargo trailer is the way to go so I really recommend that and uh uh, that you're onto the what now is are you seeing it now yeah, you're, you're I'm in the wrong way oh I have to go I have to be behind them when I look at it I have to be behind them how about that now you're the, no, you're worse. There you go. Right I'll just be in the center of the frame okay Terry so I'm just now I'm gonna start answering questions Terry can you talk about single single rear wheeled box fans building easier due to square walls but suffer from fuel economy. Yes, I am an enormous fa uh, fan of box fans. My first, I lived in a, a box fan for six years in Anchorage, Alaska. They have very good stealth. I could just park in an industrial, light industrial area of town, fit right in. No one knew, no one thought anything about a box fan being there. I could be making a delivery for the next day. I could have been gotten there late. I'm going to do a pickup for the next day. Uh, I, they have great stealth. Uh, you can't go in residential areas, you stand out in a residential area, but you gain so much that I think it's still more than worth it. Uh, many, uh, lots of places you can stealth park. Square walls, that is so huge uh, that you have just completely square walls. And I think that's one a good reason to choose a, um, a, uh, a box fan. Uh, mine was an old, it was old, it was 80s. I was in, I moved into it in 95 and it was probably in 85, so it was probably 10 years old when I was in it. I got it for $1,200. Mechanically, it was great, but it was just all beat up. Uh, it was in Anchorage, Alaska, so there was quite a bit of rust. And I'm going to move around here. Okay, come back. And um, so I got it really cheap because the owner didn't want it around. It was so ugly, he didn't want it around. But he'd taken really good mechanical condition of it. It ran ran really well, uh, and so and and I got terrible gas mileage. This was a, probably an eighty three, eighty four, something like that, with a Chevy three fifty, and I would get five six miles to the gallon. Uh, and it was really terrible. But I didn't drive much. You know, I I was stealth parking in the city. I was going to work every night. I was I worked for a, a gross, Safeway grocery store there in town in Anchorage, Alaska, and and so I drove in the morning. I would drove to my my overnight spot and I, I work nights when I say in the morning I drove my overnight spot I work nights I got off at seven in the morning so I drove to my overnight spot slept woke up had the rest of the evening to spend however wherever I wanted I did that went to work I didn't drive much I bet I didn't drive uh, 100 miles a week because you know, they were all in two three four five mile increments in Anchorage so uh, in fact the reason I moved in let me give an example the reason I moved into that was because I was I owned a, a home up in uh, Knick. If anyone of you know Alaska, Anchorage, uh, Knick Goose Bay is a, a uh, an area north about 50 miles, probably 60 by the time you got out there. And I was driving 120 miles a day, so I moved into the box van to so I could eliminate that 120 mile commute. I saved so much money by living in that box van and not commuting. Um, so. Love box fans, highly recommend them. Same thing with a step van, square, long, tall. You can stand up. Uh, it's easy to insulate, easily to build. All, all really, really good things. I'm a big fan. Sharon, what do you think of box fan? <laughs> we just addressed that one too. That was Sharon. Uh, yeah, I love box, box fans, step vans. I highly recommend them. Uh, you can, with the step vans, uh, well, one thing you can do is get a, um, with a box fan, it's pretty easy to find a Ford with a 7.3 diesel. Great engine. It's not going to get great mileage because of the aerodynamics. I mean, a box fan is just a great big brick going down the road. You're not getting great gas mileage, but you should be able to get 10 to 12 or maybe even better on, on the freeway. So it's going to be much better than I got. It's still not going to be great just because they're, the aerodynamics are so terrible on them. Step vans, you can get the Cummins 6 and the Cummins 4, 4BT, 6BT. Fantastic run forever engines. The 4BT, the four cylinder, gets 
remarkably good gas mileage will run literally forever. So if you can find one with the 4BT, you can be looking into the high teens on miles per gallon. So you get the best of both worlds, all this huge amount of space, an engine that will run forever, and pretty darn good gas mileage. Uh, Tim, why don't you like Ford vans? Because of the issue, uh, but prior to 99, uh, I was a Ford van. My last uh, truck was, uh, I owned a Ford F-150, 4x4. It was a 93. I owned it uh, for a long time. Loved it. Loved, loved it. I'm a big Ford guy. Uh, after 99, the, uh, the new ones, the Triton, uh, the 5.4, the V10, uh, whatever their big V8 is, a V6, I don't remember. Uh, the spark plug thing. And what really made me think mad isn't so much that there was a spark plug problem, engines have problems, and it wasn't universal. There was no guarantee that the problem, you'd have that problem. But if you did have that problem, Ford didn't stand behind it. And that's what makes me mad about Ford. Uh, not that they, not that they, it was bad engineering. It was entirely their fault. It was bad engineering. The original run of the, of the five Fords uh, and that whole series just didn't have enough threads on an aluminum head. The, the, the plugs would blow out. And you never knew which van would do it, which engine would do it. Some would run forever and never blow out. Some would, you'd take them home and at 20,000 miles, they'd all pop out. And you never knew. And when you, they did pop out, Ford did nothing to stand behind it. And then at the same time, they had the debacle with the Ford liter, six liter diesel. Worst engine ever made. Just, you buy it, you wait for it to blow up, then you replace it. Uh, and when they blew up, you took it to the Ford dealer and you said, this chromy engine you made, just blew up, and they say, well, we'll sell you a new one for $10,000. Uh, so a company that screws its customers like that, um, that makes it really tough for me to support them. Chevy got it right. When they went to the new generation with the 5.3, the 6, the 4.8, they have been virtually trouble-free, fantastic engines since 99 when they retired the old series. Well, for them, it was a little later. It was more like 2003 that you could really get a 5.3 available. Uh, and so they didn't have that problem. They didn't have the issue of standing behind it because they never made a bad engine with bad engineering like Ford did. The fact that they, don't sta they didn't stand behind it and they just screwed all those customers. That left a bad taste in my mouth I still haven't gotten over. Um, that's why. Darby. Would a Class C be a good rig for a beginner? It's all a matter of your budget. Let me just, I can't say this enough. An RV is not going to be cheap to run and maintain. It's going to create problems. You have all these extra systems that will fail, and eventually they'll all fail. Eventually the roof will leak, the, the windows will leak, the water pump eventually will leak, and then it'll break. The fridge, Fortunately, some of the fridges are lasting 10, 20 years, but if you buy an 18-year-old rig and it's already 18 years old, you're on borrowed time, uh, and you don't know, maybe it'll last 10 more years, maybe it'll last five more years, maybe it'll last two more years, 1,600 bucks for a new fridge. Uh, if you're gonna buy an RV, have the money in your pocket to keep it running. If you have 3,000, and I got to say this over and over again, I, see, I get this all the time. Bob, I've got $3,000. I got four or $5,000. Which RV should I buy? Don't buy an RV for $5,000. Don't do it. It's a money pit. You're going to be putting money into that over and over. It's the same engine in a standard van. It might be a 351 Ford. That's most likely. It might be the 54 Ford. With a little luck, it'd be the, the V10, which is a great engine, other than the plugs blowing out on it. Uh, and so yeah, that engine works so much harder dragging around 10, 12, 14,000 pounds than it does in a van where it's dragging around seven, eight, or nine. It works harder, the brakes work harder, the transmission works harder, it fails earlier. It, it's just all common sense stuff. Uh, have a big emergency fund for an RV. If you have the money, I do recommend Class C's. If you are a mechanic and you blow an engine and you can buy a new engine and drop it in yourself, buy it, drop in a new transmission yourself, they're the way to go. I think Class C's are your best choice. The exception being the Class B's. Uh, the Class B's are better made. They're less likely to break. 
you still have all those systems that will fail. You know, the pump, water pump's going to go out just as soon. Hopefully, you know, the good fiberglass roof on the Class Bs don't break very often. Um, so, yeah, I'm a big fan of used Class Cs, but only if you can buy a new one, you know it's going to be in pretty darn good shape, and you've got the emergency fund to keep it running, or you have the skills to repair everything that breaks. Then it's ideal. If you don't have any extra money, if you don't have any mechanical skills, and you have 5000 to spend, buy a van. Buy a van. Buy a van, buy a van, buy a van. The, the RV is going to kill you if that's all the money you have and you're not a mechanic. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Class Cs. They are easier to drive. You set it in a more normal nose situation. You have to be aware of the size. That's something you learn pretty easily. Uh, I am a big fan of the Class Cs. Lazy, well, let's see if this comes up. Uh, Sarah asks, what are the main drawbacks of buying or living in an RV? Uh, like I said, um, it's that they, the, the, the roof is eventually going to leak. It just is. And the windows eventually are going to leak. The, the, the sealant is going to wear out. If you buy it 20 years old, it's wearing out now. If it hasn't been repaired, you'll be repairing it. Um, all, the, all the systems are old. I mean, if you buy a 20-year-old RV, because uh, that's all you can afford, and that's what a lot of us can afford. Again, if you can go buy a brand, even if you go buy a brand new RV, you're going to have problems with it right off the lot, and they may or may not work with you to fix it. I've heard so many horror stories of people buying brand new RVs and they're crap, and the dealer blames the manufacturer, the blame bl manufacturer blames the dealer. No one ever fixes it. I had a friend that bought a brand new Arctic Fox, uh, the top of the line. It had four slides. They spent two. They made two or three tips trips back to the manufacturer the first year. They never got it fixed right. They spent the next five or ten years that they owned it, every, just fixing it over and over and over and again. Then they dumped it. It probably had it finally running halfway decent, fixed all the problems, and they dumped it. Uh, it was just a nightmare. And the Arctic Fox is one of the good ones. And if you'd said, well, it's a good brand name, a sliding camper, I just said Arctic Fox. But I have friends for whom it was a horror. It was a nightmare. Uh, they were mechanical, both of them, husband and wife, and they just fixed things. And uh, something just could never get fixed right. It was always wrong. The whole time. So even if you go buy a brand new one, there's no guarantee you're going to get a decent RV or trouble free RV. Be ready to fix that thing. Fix that thing a lot. I can tell you stories of people that bought, good, spent 10 grand, uh, 20 grand. I have a friend who bought a $20,000 older uh, Class C, poured money in it, poured money in it, poured money in it. Finally, it's running okay. I have another friend that bought a $10,000 RV, poured money into it, fixed everything. Took it, I was with her personally when I took it to an RV, uh, RV repair guy and said, here, fix everything that's wrong with it. We'd expected it to be 10 grand. Uh, he, he charged like three, said everything ran good. Everything else that she complained about was fine. And then uh, a year later, it was literal trash. She gave it away to an RV dealer because it was all shot. It wasn't worth anything. Uh, so that's why I don't like RVs. Uh, um, and then, of course, there's good, terrible gas mileage. Everything, the engine's working hard all the time. The, you know, it's the same. It might, it's probably the same engine that might be in a van. You might get that 454 in a van. Well, how much easier is that 454 working in a van or a 460 working in a van than it is working in a, a, a 15,000 pound RV? It just doesn't make sense. I'm not done with this one yet. Okay, let me let me check and see. I have two more questions on it. Okay. Uh, Okay, Cynthia, can you discuss pros and cons of R pods and casitas? Love, love, love casitas. It, it's an inherently intelligent uh, design. Uh, you know, they're fiberglass, they're eggs, they, they're, that's what they're commonly called, fiberglass eggs. And they're cut, they're made in half and they're molded together and dropped on top of each other. There's only one seam. And then you have the windows and the openings, but those aren't hard to keep repaired. Uh, I think I, if you said to me, I want the least trouble, most trouble free, least problem RV, I would tell you a casita. Buy a casita. Uh, you still have all the, all the uh, features, but you know, they're not that hard to fix. You, you, you still will have to replace the, uh, the fridge sometime. The water pump will go out. Most of those things are no big deal. Uh, water pump's really not. I mean, it's $100 will buy you a decent, good, decent water pump. 
water heater goes out, even the furnace goes out, you know, three, three, four hundred bucks, then you pay someone to repair it or put it in yourself. You can put it in yourself, it's not really all that bad. Um, so I'm a big fan of the Casitas. I don't know enough about the R pods to really comment. I have known people who bought them and did not like them and got rid of them. Uh, that isn't enough for me to condemn them in any way. Um, that's probably true of every vehicle type. Uh, I can't really comment on the R pods. I love all the fiberglass. I would recommend the highest that you, uh, one of the fiberglass eggs. The escapes are better. They're out of Canada. They're more expensive. Casitas, if you can find a good used casita, buy it up. I love the casitas, the scamps. There's an older, there's some older ones, things you probably not heard of. Burrow. Burrow is an older fiberglass egg. All the fiberglass eggs are my favorites. Okay. Mark, why do RV burn, RVs burn down so much? Age, they got full of propane systems, electrical systems, and then they get old. They get, um, and often I'm sure a lot of it is uh, pilot error. People aren't doing things right. Um, so they do burn down, and they seems like they do burn down at an alarming rate. I think if you compared to the per 100,000, how many burn down, it really isn't that bad. It's just that you hear about them so much and you, it just seems like they burn down every other day. I don't think they do. I think per 100,000, it's not really that bad, but um, there's a lot going on in there. And uh, well, I'll give you an example. I had a, <clears throat> I don't have an RV system. I don't have a propane system in my van, of course, because it's just a self-built van, but I did have a bulk tank and I ran a hose from the bulk tank to my stove and I had it for like five years. One day I turned on the stove and it started spewing gas around the crimp where the crimped onto the connector. And so it's a blowtorch. And the good news was the, the, ga the propane tank was right below it. So I just reached down, turned off the, the propane and um, rather than having to run outside, turn off the propane, wait for all the propane to burn out of all the line and having a blowtorch inside. So I had no danger, no fire of any kind other than the blowtorch. Uh, of the of the thing. What happened? The crimp got old. It just got old. I had it been attached and reattached and uh, um, and since then I've I replace all those adapter hoses about every two or three years. I'll never have one more than two or three year old in, in my van again. They just get old and wear out and it's the same thing with all the hoses in your whole RV and they get old and wear out and uh, crimps go bad and and hoses get brittle and they wear out and they get a little leak and it becomes a blowtorch somewhere buried in a wall you can't see. And then by the time you realize you've got a fire, the whole, the whole rig's gone. Uh, I think that's why. Age, I think it's simple age and pilot error, probably both. Uh, why not an SUV and which SUV? There's a lot to be said. I gotta go get some drink. Uh, there's a lot to be said for SUVs. Uh, in fact, I was just talking to a friend. Well, I'm going to move. I'm probably going to get out of the sun. I'm getting, bur I'm burning up. I'm probably going to go stand in the sun here in a bit. Let me get a drink. Uh, I have a friend who would just, no, don't do that. Come back. Come back. Uh, okay. Where's my soda? Oh, now I got sweat in my eyes. Okay. I got sweat in my eyes. Uh, water? I I have uh, yeah. Uh, I, can you get me a thank you? You're you're really kind. Okay. Uh, I'm still doing that one. Okay. I think I want to go stand in the shade. Okay. I'm burning up. You're done with this one. I got it. Yeah. Oh, I have mine. Okay. Yeah. Did I get done with that one? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna go stand in the shade. Uh, Uh, pardon me? Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> I do. I should have thought ahead and had a chair out in the shade. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, I'm not, boy, I'm afraid I'm not doing very good at getting through all these questions. I want to. I want to answer as many questions as I can. I guess this is a topic we'll have to do again. Oh, what did I just do? I pulled on this by, it's, this is my cord. I'm corded. Ah, uh, what was the last question? KC, what was the last question I was answering? Uh, I can't remember. Mm. 
I can't remember. I'm sorry. I was going to answer your question. I'm sure I had something wonderful and profound to say. You just know I did, but I've forgotten what the question was. How do I, Sam asked, how do I find someone to do my conversion? I, I wish I had an answer for you. Uh, every so often people will write me and say they want to do conversions for people. Uh, and I, I, I lose or, or forget their names and their list. And I'm sorry, that's not helping you any at all, is it? But um, there are people that do them. Uh, it's, that's a tough one that I don't have a good answer for. I think I did. I think I'm right dead center now. Uh, how about now? According to, according to, I'm according to this dead center in the frame. Okay, how about that? Was that the right direction? Wrong direction? How about that? <laughs> That's exactly where I started. <laughs> Now, well, you're you're behind me. I think there's a delay. Okay, how about that? How about that? I moved. Okay. Yeah, you got to wait till I move because we're we're uh, okay. I we're good. Uh, how do I, f oh, SUVs, that was the question I got, didn't answer. And I'm glad you asked, because that's a good question. Uh, I'm a huge fan of SUVs. Uh, I particularly like uh, the big ones. Oh, I just ran into a guy who had a four-door Jeep, and he had put on a pop top. And I was in love. I mean, I was in love. And that's, that's my dream vehicle, a four-door Jeep with a pop top. Oh, man, I'd live in there in a heartbeat. Or... I'm not a big fan of rooftop tents, but I don't think they're going to last used day after day after day for years after years. Not like a van will. Uh, and they're so expensive. I mean, a couple grand. Those things are a couple grand. Uh, and so I'm not a big fan of the rooftop tents for a number of reasons. That's discussion for another day, I guess. Yeah, I like the Suburbans. I like um, the Expedition. I buy, you know, an Expedition is a great rig, uh, especially an older one that doesn't have the 5.4. Or if you're, you have the money set aside, I'm going to blow some spark plugs, and so I'm prepared to buy to replace the spark plugs in my 5.4 or my V10 or the whatever the big V6 is in there. I think it's a 4.7, 4.6, something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, any of them. I like all of them. I think so. The big problem with SUVs is the low height. They're not as tall as a van. You get four-wheel drive. So to my mind, it's all a question of which do you want, four-wheel drive or a higher top. I mean, even on a low-top van, you get more standing room, more uh, slumped-over room than you do in an SUV. It's the, it's the height of the roof that, to me, is the big, big disadvantage of, um, of an SUV. So that's... That's the big drawback. You get great stealth, and no one thinks you're going to be camping in an SUV. You can easily get them with four-wheel drive. Uh, you can even get uh, Suburbans and uh, the Expedition and whatever the other big one is in um, diesel, uh, the diesel, the Duramax. You could probably find a 7.3, which is a superb engine, in one of an older Ford uh, uh, Expedition or whatever those are, Excursion. Expedition, XB, yeah, and Excursion, those are the two. And they're, they're great. You know, if you get a 7.3 in there, you get decent gas mileage, you run forever, wonderful engine. Uh, so that's something to really think about. And in the, in the Chevy, this, the Duramax is a great engine. Uh, so that would work well. Um, and then the smaller ones, uh, I have, you know, people ask me that all the time. Bob, why don't you ever have any videos on SUVs? So I went and made a, a playlist. I probably have six or seven videos of people in SUVs. I'm a fan. And if you have a good, decent running SUV, go, go in it. Uh, take out the back seats, lay them down, take out the uh, front passenger seat, just so you can get a long enough thing you can sleep comfortably stretched out. That's the whole key to living in a vehicle. If you can't do that, I think it's gonna be a hard way to go. And that's one of the reasons I don't recommend cars for the most part, because you can't do that. If you can, any vehicle can be a good home if you can stretch out and sleep.
but the SUVs are even better. I'm a fan of SUVs, and, and I guess I don't talk about them enough, and people don't know that I'm a fan, but I am. Uh, and I don't know how to do someone to do, find your someone to do your conversion, I'm afraid. The big companies that have shops, they're outrageous. 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars. Outrageous. And I'm afraid I don't have a good answer. The, my answer would be to put together a, a spreadsheet on the Homes and Wheels Alliance page, put people together. And uh, so far I just haven't, it's something I haven't gotten to. Cynthia, what is the difference between a Class B and a ProTech? I don't know what a ProTech is. Price advantages. Cynthia, I don't know what a ProTech is. No idea. A Class B, uh, the, the traditional one you think of is the Road Trex. Road Trek um, took a, a regular Chevy or Dodge or Ford. Mainly a lot of Dodges. Mainly the Road Trex, older Road Trex you'll find will be on Dodge bodies. And, uh, and they just cut the top off and turn them into to, uh, B, to homes, to, into RVs. And I'm a big fan of Class Bs. I think most people should be looking at a Class B first, uh, unless you just have to have a lot of room and a lot of comfort. The Class Bs are so crowded, they feel crowded. Uh, I have a friend, in fact, he's camp near here, who has a Class B and he tows a cargo trailer. The cargo trailer has become his uh, man cave. He happens to be a man, but it could be your lady cave, I guess. And so he, he does his cooking and sleeping in the Class B, and he spends all of his hangout time in the cargo tra trailer and, and storage, and he's really happy with that. And that might be something for everyone to give some thought to. Now, I'm a fan of Class Bs. Uh, you're, it's very unlikely the roof will leak, unless the fiberglass cracks. If you have windows in the roof, you know, you have to, you're going to have to pull the uh, caulking off it and recaulk it every so often. Like anything with caulks, with caulks, with uh, caulk in it, you'll have, to, you'll have to take care of the caulk. That's no big deal. You get used to that. The roof isn't just going to get torn and start leaking and be a disaster like it will be eventually on all RVs. Except, and this hasn't come up yet and I'm going to cover this now, except the lazy days and the born free and, of course, the fiberglass eggs. Lazy Days and Born Free both uh, have a one-piece roof, and I think it's the same thing as with the fiberglass eggs. It's dropped on as a cap, and I think it virtually cannot leak. And so, uh, class, the Lazy Days are my first recommendation. You Okay, here's the vehicle to buy with the least likely to have problems. Lazy Day, well, fiberglass eggs, because they're affordable. They're still, they hold their, they're so popular and great, they really hold their value and they're, they're going to be expensive even used. Uh, maybe you can find an older Scamp or an older Burrow, and those are great rigs. Uh, but find a Casito if you can. And then, so my first reliable, RV to buy in terms of reliability is a, a fiberglass egg, uh, any good one, and, and they're all good. Uh, and then a Lazy Days is made better than all the others. It's much more expensive than the, all the others. They go together. Don't think you're going to get something for free. You buy a $12,000 brand, brand, $12, brand new RV, it's crap. And that's why they're selling it for $12,000, because it's crap. That Lazy Days is over $100, because it is not crap, it's great. And so you get what you pay for, and most of us can't go order a new Lazy Days and wait. There are long, long wait times. Even as expensive as they are, there's long wait times. Why? Because they're quality. People are willing to pay for quality. So Lazy Days and Born Free is the same. They're out of business and have been for a little while. I think the Chinooks are good. They're better made than most. So uh, Chinooks, uh, Lazy Days first, Born Free, Chinooks. I think of all the RVs, Winnebago is made a little better. I would that would be my next on the list, and a Class B is would be first because it'll be cheaper. Maybe it may not even be cheaper. Uh, there's just so much less to go wrong. the The roof won't fail. Uh, you can find a good used one. You can find you with a little luck. You could find a good used road track from the 90s for 10 grand, 15 grand. Um, of course, now they're going to be transits and, and Ram Promasters. And I don't know enough about them to say how they're going to hold up. It's a little too early yet, I think. At any rate, um, I don't know what a ProTech is. I can't comment on it.
Donna, what is the best? What is the best to keep a van cool in the summer? I don't have a good answer. Ventilation, shade, uh, uh, moving air, fans. Uh, well, of course, the best is just go to a place where it's not as hot. Go above 8,000 feet, and it won't be nearly as hot, and you can be comfortable. That's about the only way. Um, there's no good. Um, there is no good answer to keeping a van cool in hot country. You just can't do it unless you uh, run a generator and put in a rooftop, a either a rooftop AC or a window AC. Uh, if you haven't, you, it's almost impossible to have enough solar to run an air conditioning on the van. It is possible. You can get 900 watts on a van, and that will run an AC, a small AC unit. Um, and if you insulate it well, that will keep it cool for a long time. Uh, that's about the only way to, to do it. Uh, and if you're out in the forest, park in the shade, uh, have a generator, run your generator, run a window air conditioner. Uh, window, uh, some might have even known people who uh, had, and I knew a guy had an ambulance, and he ran a portable air conditioner. It worked really well for him. Uh, Sam Miller. So uh, there is no good answer. It's, they're going to be hot. A van in the summer will be hot if you're in a hot place. Get out of the hot place. Sam Miller, what are the advantages and disadvantages of buying a diesel van? Uh, the gas mileage should be better, although that's marginal anymore. You know, a good Chevy or Ford, or the latest generation, should get you 17, 18, 19 miles to the gallon on the freeway. You won't do much better than that with a, with a, uh, with a diesel. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Minutes. Oh, I got to hurry up. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not answering enough questions. Uh, I don't recommend diesels anymore. They're just not worth the effort. The big disadvantage is they take up the entire, they take up the entire interior of the, the, of the nose and working on them is a nightmare and you got to find a special mechanics. I don't recommend diesel vans. I do offer them. You know, I want everyone to know they exist and it might be something for you to consider. I personally would not own one and don't recommend them. But there are people that love diesels and will tell you exactly the opposite. So you make your own choice. They're out there. Um, I, don't, I don't think I recommend them. Milwaukee Brew, Ford Transit Tall Roof. What are your thoughts on the space you get from a Transit? Fantastic, that's all you can say. Look at all the room you get in one of those things, wow. That and the Promaster, and I think the Promaster actually has a little more interior room. Um, they're just so new that as I'm, a, I'm an old fart, let, let's write that down, Bob is an old fart. Uh, and so, you know, it's such a different engine and different way of thinking, it's hard for me. And, but bear that as a mind, in mind that that's an old farts struggle with newness and write it off as that. Uh, man, the interior of those things are so fantastic. And, you know, uh, I, 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 was, my, I was tempted to say, well, you can trust Ford. And then I think back to the Ford six liter diesel, which is the worst engine ever made and put in any American vehicle. And they did nothing to back it up. And I think of the spark plugs popping out. I have friends who's popped spark plugs, 500 bucks, when they didn't have a penny to their name. And I, we all cursed Ford that day because Ford did nothing, cared nothing about its customers. And they'll get wound up. Uh, so do you trust Ford or Dodge? It's up to you. Uh, that their new engines are going to be good and last forever? It's so too early, I can't really tell you. They love them in Europe. They've been around in Europe for a very, very long time, and they have good reputations, good, uh, good records. Buy a Ford. If I were going to buy one or the other, I'd buy a Ford. I don't think I'd want a Fiat. Matthew, what do you think about cheap solar panels on RVs? Great! The solar panel itself is a commodity. Uh, it doesn't even matter anymore, really, the price of the solar panel. Cheap, uh, cheap or, or, or expensive. Uh, the difference is going to be very little. Buy a poly or a mono, uh, even used, buy them used. We just, a guy just gave us a whole bunch of used solar panels we're going to give away as kit and kits. Uh, used solar panels are just fine. New, new cheap solar panels are just fine. Don't, don't hesitate. Solar panels are commodities. J, J Lee, Chevy or Ford, which have more of a square interior? Oh, well, right now the tran the, um, but Ford always has. Chevy's always had a more rounded interior. I have the Express, 
which is from 99 on, very rounded, terrible. The Ford's better, and the new Transit is far better than any Chevy because they don't have a Euro van yet. So a Chevy or Ford, which have a bit more of a square interior Ford? Yeah, and then if you throw in the Dodge Ram Promaster versus Transit, uh, I think the Promaster is squarer and bigger. Uh, if that's your main consideration, then that's the, that's the answer. Emily, do you recommend buying a plain cargo trailer or one that's already insulated like a Wee Roll? If you can do it yourself, you're going to save so much money. I love the Wee Roll because for people who can't do it themselves. They don't have the skills, they don't have the time, they don't have the money, they don't have the energy. Well, if they don't have the money, they can't buy a Wee Roll. Um, uh, the Wee Roll does all that for you. But if you have any skills, and it's not hard to install insulation in, in a cargo trailer. I just used, um, mine came with 3 8 inch plywood on the walls, and I bought sheets of, of styrofoam and drove screws. It was a, it was a one inch, so I got a, an inch and a half screw that went through the 3 8 inch plywood. And I put uh, washers. I just went to, to Fred, anywhere. You go anywhere, buy a box of flat washers. That's what they're called, at least an inch. And then you just drive sheet metal screws in. Not even sheet, no, not sheet metal screws. Um, you can even drywall screws. Drywall screws will rust. Don't do that. Uh, and then just you can just screw, six screws would hold a sheet of, ply of uh, styrofoam insulation. And it's, it's insulated that easily. Anyone can do it. Then you have to cut the rest. What the four foot piece will fit in, so you have a six foot tall trailer. You'll have to cut the other one right down the middle, or you could buy two foot sections instead of four foot. And hopefully it's exactly six foot and you can pop it right in. Otherwise you might have to cut it and that's no big deal. Um, it's really easy to insulate with insulation, with uh, panel, with um, styrofoam. Cutting the windows will be hard. You have to know what you're doing to cut a window or to put in the vent. That's where the Wii Roll pays off is that he's already, he'll put in the vents, he'll put in the windows and the insulation, and he'll give you some kind of an interior covering. Uh, if that's worth the extra money, it's a lot of extra money. So if you buy a six by 10 cargo trailer for 2,500, no more than three grand with a tall roof and despair and, and everything, and he's probably six or more, and for that you get the insulation. It's aluminum, it's lighter. Um, if you could do it, do it yourself. I do like the Wii Rolls. I'm very glad you have that option for those of you who can't do the work, but uh, I do recommend you do it yourself if at all possible. Uh, uh, so I do recommend the plain cargo trailer and not the, um, okay, O-T-A-K-U girl. Otaku? Otaku? What do you think of passenger buses? I'm afraid, uh, and, and I'm, I, this isn't going to be popular, nearly everyone I know that buys a bus pours money in. And that doesn't make sense. In buses have industrial diesel engines. They are made the best of any motor vehicle in America to withstand accidents. They're, they're made to endure any kind of... They're made to hit, be hit by a train, and there are kids that will walk away even after being hit by a train. They'll roll over and most everyone will walk away. They're so well made and great industrial, the best engines. And they don't hold up. I think everyone, uh, I talked to a bunch of the guys before the first Schoolie Palooza in Quartzsite. I was on their website talking to them about it, working, coordinating with the RTR. And they, everyone would say, who's coming? If we held it there, who would come? And I tell you, two thirds of them answered, said, "Well, if I can get the bus running, and I think it'll be reliable, I'll come there by the. I'll come." And you know, that's the way it is with these buses, these old school buses, passenger buses. Can you get them running reliable? And my, I'm afraid my answer is most people can't. Um, I had friends that just bought a, a good used school bus. I think they spent five on it, 5,000, and it immediately failed. The engine blew up and they put a brand new $10,000 engine in it. And my goodness, um, I don't, as wonderful as they are, and as much as this is gonna make so many of you mad, I don't recommend buses. I just think you're gonna end up pouring money in. If you got a family, you, you probably have no choice. I'd still buy a step van. I'd still buy a step van with a bus, over a bus. Uh, the shuttle buses are better. I'm thinking mainly, oh, maybe that's what you meant, a shuttle bus. Uh, a shuttle bus, I think, higher of. 
It's, a lot of them, you could probably find a good shuttle bus with a 7.3, which is a great engine. Um, yeah, maybe the shuttle buses, maybe that's a better idea. Steve, is the minivan big enough to live in full time? It absolutely is. We just built a minivan we're going to give away to someone. Uh, that's what we're going to be giving away from Homes on Wheels Alliance. We're going to buy, I bought a $2,600 uh, Ford Windstar minivan. Is it time? Oh, poop. Oh, I hate quitting. Uh, no, don't. Keep going. I hate not answering people's questions. Everyone thought she was a rat or a rabbit oh, but, or something. So. I don't know if I can do it. Uh, They're like, I just saw a rat. Uh, this is the rat. Let's see if I can. Okay, there she goes. This is the rat you folks saw. Let me. This is um, the little rat. <laughs> I'm a rat lover, and that's because I am a rat, I guess. She's so cute. This is, can I say who it is? Yeah. This is Kona, and Kona belongs to uh, KC, and Kona's a wonderful little dog. She's a real bossy little thing. This is her forest. Uh, this is her forest, and she just lets you in it, and she wants everyone to know that. But she's a real cutie, and uh, we've become pretty good bond friends, and I've bonded pretty well to her. You can tell I'm not abusing her or anything. She's having a good time here. Okay, I love minivans. We just bought this twenty six hundred dollars. It's uh, a nineteen. It's a two thousand, even two thousand Ford Windstar. Had ninety two thousand miles on it. We had a mechanic. We had a certified mechanic uh, who worked for Dodge, uh, Dodge Chrysler in Anchorage. Uh, he was there while I was there, and we didn't know each other. And so he's an expert, master mechanic. Looked this thing over and said it is in superb shape. This thing will last a long, long time for someone. And <clears throat> So I and, and that was twenty six hundred. We put new tires on it for four hundred bucks for three thousand dollars. This is going to and with ninety two thousand miles, someone's going to get years and years of great service out of this minivan. Great home. We did it. We built it. Uh, I did. I've got vlogs and we did. A, I guess I don't have a complete final vlog. Let me get that final vlog all cut, netted, and ready to go and go put it up. We'll do a, a series on building the minivan and we're going to have a. Uh, a PDF you can download of exactly how we built it. I think it's superb. Everyone that sat down inside that minivan said, I am amazed I could live in here. She's still here with me. She just, uh, she's a cuddle bug. This is a real cuddle bug here. Uh, everyone who's went in there and sat down afterwards and said, wow, I'm really surprised. I think I could live in this minivan. So yes, I am a huge fan. My recommend is everyone for three grand you should be able to find a really good, reliable minivan. And then for another grand, you could put in solar, do a no-build minivan, uh, a no-build build. We'll do, I want to do that. I want to show you a no-build build. Just a cot, plastic drawers, plastic, uh, plastic everything for a few hundred bucks. You want her back, huh? Well, I'll take her out of your way so you can get to the questions. Oh, yeah, I can't hold the questions. Okay. All right. I do miss her. There she goes. The little rat's gone now. Uh, rug rat. Uh, I have a very limited budget. What type of trailer do you recommend? I recommend minivans first. Uh, uh, cargo trailer, yeah. Do uh, you mean brands? Uh, what was mine? Poop, I can never remember the brand. Wells Fargo is a well popular brand name. You know, cargo trailers are kind of, what's the name of the, Dexter. The one thing that people will tell you about cargo trailers is Dexter trailers are better. I'm not a trailer guy. I'm not an expert. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure, and if I'm wrong, if that's not the name of the really good brand of Axle. Did I say that? Dexter Axles are better. Uh, if, if I'm wrong, will you write in and correct me? I believe it's Dexter. Um, I think Dexter is a serial killer. Uh, but I think so, it's Dexter, and if, as long as it has Dexter axle, that's the only thing that can go wrong. I mean, they're really pretty basic things. Um, I can't remember the name of the one I bought. It was very good. Uh, oh, it was an interstate, uh, but it wasn't an interstate. It was a different model of interstate, and I forget. Sorry, my poor pea brain isn't doing it. Uh, okay, there, one more. I recommend minivans first and then a cargo trailer. They're kind of commodities. Just do a little bit of research, make sure it's a good name. And this best name, if you do a Google search on best trailer axle, it would probably come up. And I think it's Dexter. If anyone, if someone corrects me, please let me know. I might have that wrong. I'm not a real 
expert on cargo trailers. I had, I had one. I lived in one for five years, and I loved it. Anyone say, uh, what do you think about Toyota RVs? That's a good question. Boy, I'm so sorry I'm not answering all your questions. Uh, the end. Why are there so many vans with under 10K, 110K at dealership? Uh, I'm not familiar with that. Why are there so many vans at, uh, under 10K at dealerships? Uh, probably uh, they were rentals. Uh, my van, which you see behind me there, all bright, was a uh, rental. It went to budget rental car, and they sold it at 12,000 miles. I bought it new with 12,000 miles on it uh, with full factory warranty. Uh, both the uh, drivetrain and uh, the bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty were still good and transferable and automatically transferable. Anybody who came in with it could get full warranty. Uh, so my guess is the ones you're finding at dealers that, that are 10K are rentals. Uh, I've been extremely, really, extremely happy with mine. I mean, somebody had it for 12,000, a renter. Uh, in fact, I think I've seen a sign somewhere that was painted over, but I could make out that it was budget. I believe budget rental uh, had it and it had 12,000 miles on it. And I think that's what you're running into. Could have been a lease that was returned. I don't know, but probably a rental. I'm very, very happy with mine. Uh, TH asks, are step vans as expensive as having to fix an RV? A lot of them are standard engines. They'll have the 5.4, they'll have the 5.3, or the even the older ones will have like a 350 or 351. And those are just van engines. Uh, they won't be expensive to fix. I don't know if they're harder to get into or out of. That I, I honestly don't know. The uh, Cummins is a great engine. Uh, you'll, you, if you'll be lucky if you can find one with a Cummins 6 or 4. Uh, four six cylinder or four cylinder, the 4BT, 6BT. Uh, any diesel is going to be more expensive than a gas. And again, I don't really recommend diesels. I don't recommend diesels. But uh, a lot of people love them and want them, so go ahead. Snickers, Scamp versus Casita, both great. Uh, Scamp should be cheaper because Casita is out of business. I think it'll be just as good, easy to repair, easy to keep running. If you don't see anything obviously wrong with it, generally it's going to be good. Uh, I'm a big fan, again, of all the fiberglass eggs, Scamp or Casita. Casita is still in business. You can still get parts. Maybe a slight advantage to the Casita, but the Scamp will be cheaper, and they're great. Uh, there's no, I'm not saying anything about, bad about scamp, scamp in any way. Casita's probably a little better. Uh, Linda, there are no limit laws for RVs. Just a common, comment, not a question. Absolutely. In fact, the RV Industry Association, uh, are the RVIA, has been fighting every state that tries to implement a, uh, a limit law against RVs. The RVIA has fought them, poured money in from the manufacturers. Why? Because they produce crap and they don't want to fix it. And they don't want to be forced to fix the crap they make. It's just that simple. Uh, what's that guy's name? There's a guy who puts out a newsletter every Saturday, and he is the leading voice against the crap RV. Uh, write in, why don't you write in on the, uh, what's his, what's that RV, what is his, I should support him. Uh, he's doing really good work. Um, I forget the name of the, um, I, I subscribe to his, every Saturday it comes out. It's a newsletter on RVs. If somebody would, would who knows, would put that in the comment, and uh, we'd get that out. He, he's fighting them. That's how I know the RVIA is, is fighting the lemon laws uh, because he's fighting for the lemon laws and he's fighting against them. And they're attacking him and trying to destroy him because he's trying to get lemon laws to protect you and me. So, boy, I wish I could remember his name. Uh, and I, would, I would like you all to know and go subscribe and send him in a few bucks or, or use his link to go to Amazon. Uh, of course, support me, but this guy's doing really good work and you, we should all support him. What is it? RVtravel.com. Okay. Uh, it's RV. I knew it was a really simple name. That's why I thought I could remember it, but I can't remember anything. Uh, it's RVtravel.com. Try that. It's his Saturday newsletter. Sign up. Uh, buy some things off of Amazon from him. Buy more from me, but buy some from him and send him a few bucks. The guy's fighting a good fight for us, and he should be supported. Uh, CTV, do you plan on doing any videos on what SUVs are the best choice? Uh, I have, actually I have a lot of SUV videos, UV videos. I bet I have six or ten of, of people who are living in SUVs. Um, I'm a Chevy guy, so right now I would still back Chevys. Uh, 
But, you know, if you're a Ford guy, the Expedition and the Excursion are great. I have friends that have them both and love them. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Suburban. The Suburban, uh, that's their big, long four-door uh, SUV, is the longest model in America ever. They've been making Suburbans for longer under that name for longer than any other model ever. Uh, even, I guess, even the one F-150, because that's its stand to fame, claim to fame. I am a big fan of the Suburban, and you can get them with the diesels if you want a Duramax. Duramax is a great engine. Uh, I don't, I, you know, like all the, most of the Fords get bad knocks, except the 7.3. Um, and I've never heard a bad knock on the Chevy Duramaxes. They're good engines. Uh, no, I'm a fan of SUVs. Which one would be the best? I'm a Chevy guy. I'd buy a 5.3. That's simple. I'd buy uh, a Yukon Tahoe Suburban, if you want a full size, uh, with a uh, with a uh, four wheel drive and the 5.3 or the 4.8. They're so light, a 4.8 would be plenty. 4.8 is a great engine. I have a 4.8 in my van and it's fine even for my van and it's heavy. Um, it's a three quarter ton. Other than that, what do I recommend? Um, I tell you, one I would buy is the, uh, I believe they're late 90s Wranglers, Jeep Wranglers. They're the boxy ones. I'm a big fan of that SUV. Um, I don't know why. I have a friend, my friend Forrest says is, is the biggest motorhead that I've ever known, and he thinks they're fantastic. Uh, they made, for a few years, they made that Wrangler, the boxy Wrangler. I think it's run ran from like 97 to... 2000, something like that. I'm, forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think they, and it's, it's got, it had their old standard, uh, I think it was the 250, 258, but no, maybe it's not. It's the four liter. It's the four liter, which is a great engine. Uh, and for a while they put five speeds in them and that five speed and the four liter would get high twenties miles to the gallon consistently and run forever. And, uh, that's what I really recommend. And the, and the, tra the transmission on the automatic is a Toyota. They literally bought this transmission from Toyota, and I guess it's a great transmission. And the and the four liter uh, Jeep engine is a great engine. And I just I think the, I think the most of those, uh, the lot of them, there's parts you can build them up and turn them into super back off roaders. Um, I think that year of Jeep, those model years of Jeeps, were would be my recommendation. And then there was the uh, Cherokee. That was the Wrangler. No, it wasn't the Wrangler. It was the Cherokee. I'm sorry, I don't know my poor brain. Um, that's an SUV I really like and recommend. If you can find the five-speed, they're hard to find because uh, everyone wants one because they get such fantastic gas mileage. Uh, and I only know all this because my friend Forrest, the motorhead, uh, raves about them. I think the Explorer is a good SUV. Uh, I, I, you know, and I don't know much about the SUVs. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll tell you this. I was married. My last wife had a... Um, Pathfinder, a Nissan Pathfinder. We finally got rid of that thing at 300,000 miles and it was still virtually, it, it was the best vehicle I've ever owned. At 300,000 miles, it was fantastic. Uh, finally, it needed a clutch and the clutch was gonna be $800 and I didn't know how to put in a clutch. And so we gave it to a friend and you know, it's, it's got three, it was probably 20, it was probably an 89 or something. And uh, was it a 90s? It had full fuel injection, so it was probably mid 90s. And, um, it was old and had 300,000 miles and it wasn't worth anything. It wasn't worth $800 for a new clutch. We gave it to a friend who put the clutch in because he knew how for next to nothing. And um, he, he's still driving as far as I know. It's a fantastic. Nissan Pathfinder was an amazing rig. I would give the thought to that. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Which SUVs are best? You know what, my friend Forrest, I should sit down with him and and do a, a, a video on, on which of the vehicle, because he's the guy that I think is an expert. I think I'm done. I think I'm out of questions. And it's been long. I've gone over. I've answered all these. I'm going to stop, because you're probably all bored. Over. They wanted bubbles with Conan. OK, Conan. OK. I know who you love here. <laughs> I know who you actually love. Let's see. Let me do the bubbles. Oh, but how are Conan and I going to dance? I don't know. We got to dance. Kona, you want to see Kona and I dance to the bubbles? Oh, let's see. We can do that. Will she dance with me, do you think? Yeah. We got bubbles. I think Kona will dance with me. 
It's the only way I can get anyone to dance with me is my cute little partner. So can you see us? So Kona, let's dance, Kona. Here, oh no, you can't hold, yeah, it. I'll hold it. Well, let's turn it around. You can't see me, so we'll turn it around. No, no. Oh, oh, what did I do? Did I do something bad? No. Perfect. It's on me? Oh, now, oh. We have to turn it around. You turn around, the camera around. Can you see me? Look at the camera. Can you? You had it right before. Oh, I tried to turn it around so she could see it. Yep, good. I don't know. Well, I'm not in the screen. Yes, you are. Now you're not. I'll let this happen. I think I turned around. You were there perfectly before. Now I know I was, but I turned it around because I wanted her to see it. No, don't worry about that. I don't okay, well, this is just wasting time. Okay, I'll do it again. I'll take it because you can't see it. All right, take it again. Now i got to adjust it. i got to learn to adjust it right. Okay, let's try that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so going and I, so we're going to, finally a band dance partner. I've been looking for a long time. <laughs> oh, now I should be moving her little paws around. Oops. She's got all the moves. She's got all the moves. She gives me class. <laughs> okay, we better stop. I'll give her back to you. Uh, okay, uh, I think the bubbles. Oh no, I turned the camera. I'm sorry, I turned the camera on you. I screwed up. Uh, okay, I'm done, folks. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Sorry, I didn't answer more questions. I get so I get so long-winded. I want to tell you everything I can, and so I try to I try to do good, and sometimes I mess up. We'll we'll do this topic again because obviously there are more questions that we didn't get to. We'll do a cycle of topics. We'll do more topics every time, and then we'll come back and cover this one again. Uh, okay, folks, thanks so much. We'll talk to you later.